Uh, C.S. Lewis actually uh, made a comment once. He said it's not the, um, that the guy's mind was great, bigger than anybody else's. It's not that his head was bigger than anybody else's in the room. It's just that it, it looked bigger because his heart was so shriveled. <laughs> I remember saying that once and thinking, that's a funny statement. But I had a friend, actually, somebody I knew well, who um, was an intellectual. And, uh, and it had that, there was that component uh, where things, things been isolated into facts and into the hard realities. And, and this gentleman was so adamant about that, but he barely lived in the sentient, if that's the right word, I don't want to use the word sentimental, but in the world of, of feeling, the felt. And uh, I don't know if that's a good way to start talking about Meldrum's work. Uh, this is Max Meldrum, part two. And I'm going to do a part three, actually, because he has these wonderful statements that define the visual order the way I talk about it. He never uses the word, but he uses these phrases over and over again. So, But today's uh, thing is just to put in front of you the um, paintings and discuss the art of, uh, of Max Meldrum. And I'm going, of course, because of who I am, I'm going to discuss it to some degree in the light of the Boston School, who operates rather similarly. I'm also going to use some references to uh, Sargent. So I'm trying to do this in 20 minutes, so I'm going to get right on it. Here we go. So this is the work which you're seeing in front of you now, is the, uh, is the uh, landscapes of, uh, of, of, of Max Meldrum. Uh, the bottom left one is by Sargent. Now, what we know about both of them is that they were essentially what you call tonalists at that time. Sargent's early training, all of his effects were gained by values and the use of edge and that sort of thing. Whereas you get to, uh, and with Meldrum, it appears to be rather the same thing, where he doesn't appear to actually care much about the, the, the live note. Um, so I'm, I'm setting these, note, these in front of you, and I'm going to move right through them because there's going to be plenty for you to look at. Um, but that's just a beginning point. Uh, Thompson, I mean, I, I mean, sorry, Meldrum, <laughs> an old governor of New Hampshire, isn't that funny? Uh, Max Meldrum also refers to um, uh, composition as being something curious. I forget what his phrase is, but uh, uh, like there is no such thing as a science of composition. Um, and frankly, unity and all those things are, are inevitably uh, rather scientific. But if you combine them with the need uh, to communicate your your sensations, your feeling, your 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 response to nature in front of you, they become even more so. But that's just me chatting. So here you are, three on the right are all uh, Max Meldrums. This is his, you know, the Godfather to Max Meldrum is uh, is uh, Constable, and I'm just showing you these because I frankly think that there's he often has more in common with Constable than he does with Bonet or anybody like that. Uh, you'll see why. Uh, Constable, though, is he's, he really is an early conversation about the ocular. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that um, Meldrum, who originates in Scotland, by the way, uh, would also um, pay attention to that. Uh, I mean, it's the world we're in. It's the ocular, right? It's the world of the eye. So, but what I'm showing you now is a Meldrum... Um, in the bottom right corner is a meldrum in which that's, he, he actually is extending the use of, of the chromatic elements, the, right, the color, the intensity. But right above that is a sergeant, and you can see this extended search and uh, for, for the qualities, for, for, you know, in, in the case of sergeant, and, and all the other two, by the way, the, the, the left one is Monet, and everyone knows that, no, those, those notes. Uh, and then down below is, uh, is um, Gertrude Fisk, in a show, in a picture that was in a show recently, which is a really wonderful example of exactly the same kind of thinking in all three places about the ocular. It's just the color relations, color, color relations, you know, where they land and all those sorts of things, which is the sort of the bailiwick of, of you know, what he makes, what, what Meldrum wants to call, a, you know, the science of appearances. They're all into it. They all get it. However, Meldrum here keeps on painting. I don't know what you'd call these things. They're, they're, this, is, this perhaps is a watercolor, I don't know, but it has the perfunctory qualities about it, right? Of just, just, being, just being knocked off, and, um, and that's it. And you can see that in the other three, I mean, I would think that if you're going to buy pictures, even though this, the bottom one may have a quality of light that's really desirable, the other three pictures are all considerably more, they, they bring more, right? And that's one of those points I'll make with, as we go along. Uh, 
Is he just doing a knockoff? Is he just has a, has a perfunctory way of performing a mechanical process? By the way, a mechanical process is that good. It's very special. <laughs> and I don't never take anything away from, from uh, Meldrum. He's not wrong about what he's talking about. And again, what is this? So here's, uh, here's a, the painting on the right is by Thompson. I mean, in fact, by Meldrum. And the one on the left is by, as you know, I've showed you before, the blue cup. They're painted with exactly the same mindset, color, you know, the ocular, you know, they're paying attention to the look of nature and the way it behaves, you know, the elements and the right relations to each other and all that sort of stuff. But again, uh, uh, Meldrum in his own art seems to fo just be very satisfied with a very perfunctory performance, right? Just knocks off a top few handful of notes, gets them in the right place, uh, you know, does whatever shape work he needs to and exits. So... You know, what is that? You know, what is that that he's doing? But when you, I'm just saying, look at it. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I believe he's a good base for all that we do. I don't think he's the final <laughs> statement uh, about any of what we do. Uh, so uh, moving on, then I think this painting on the left, which is a, is a Meldrum again, is a superb example of what I teach, actually. It's the visual order done really, really well. The picture, I mean, I, I won't judge his colors. I wasn't in the room, they, but they're so relationally right and the right, the right uh, uh, range of chromas and all the passages and all that sort of stuff. Uh, one of the things about Degas, the one on the upper right is Degas. And um, you can see that Degas uh, is, I don't know what he's operating with, but his, but his world is nowhere near as simply right. He comes from uh, more more of a an academic background. He probably pieced this picture together from parts. He probably didn't paint it on the spot, but you can see the same basic visual content is already on his mind, even though he doesn't paint, uh, uh, you know, big fat fat blobs and just let them sit. Um, but uh, I do want you to look at the one on the left because of the orientation around the um, the visual order. You know, the, 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 uh, the way you see and you don't see the lost and found, you popped points, you know, all the highlights are at their proper levels to the whole impression and uh, so on. It's a, it's, a, it's a very nice piece of work and completely uninspiring. Uh, so, uh, Jazz, forgive me for saying it, but <laughs> he keeps on doing that. You know, he's, he's got the ocular concepts down and then he seems to not particularly be interested in the aesthetic using it, you know, aesthetically. Uh, but that's, this is really quality seeing, you know, what you're seeing on the left. This is the stuff you've got to be able to do. So I'm going to go now to the portrait thing. Look at the portrait on the right by, by um, I should have made that bigger, by uh, Meldrum again. And again, doesn't it appear to be correct in virtually every way? And yet a perfunctory performance, right? Uh, there's that search that goes on beyond that for the for deeper music. I think of this sometimes when I look at this, either this or the floral, which is also Meldrum below. I think of it as hitting, you know, a beautiful tune, you know, ta 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 ta, you know, or something or other, and then just playing it over and over and over again and leaving. And um, it's just not as it's not as rich a field, you know. When you see this painting by Tarbell on the left, this is only a, it's a shrunk version of it. I mean, I've I've cropped it. Uh, you see that there's a there's a more profound search. There's something he's he's looking for more. He's interested in in searching and searching and searching more. Whereas it does look like uh, there's a certain performance thing going on with um, with Meldrum that you'd call uh, you know getting the big notes right and leaving. You know, getting the basic effect, the light, whatever, which he does and leaves. The florals. I mean, that's a really nice piece of color work down there. No matter what he says about color, you know. And, and, and setting up those players in the visual order. And so the kind of question is, what, was that the music that he saw or was he just perform, Was he just knocking something off? He put it up there and knocked it off. I mean, it's one of those things that seems to keep happening. You'll see it in the student toward the end. So then here's a, uh, here, here's a, a painting by, um, by Meldrum on the left. And again, that's exactly what it appears to be, uh, looking just as kind of a showing off that I can knock this off in five minutes. It has that feeling, you know, and yet, any sergeant you've ever seen is is is, is richer than that, is more is more is more um, gratifying to that to multiple levels of your of including of your eye. <laughs> and yet, this is right as if it were in a lay-in. And so, 
I don't know if these things are demonstrations or if that's a whole painting or if, I mean, but, but his handling, for example, of the head has that quality of being a mechanical process. Again, it's like paint by number. I do this, I do that, I bang, 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 and I'm out, you know. And that's what people might think I'm doing, actually, except that I don't stop there, and why would I? And I'm not saying he shouldn't, but I suggest to you that if I was given a choice between these two paintings, I'd take the, uh, I'd take the decamp on the right any time, <laughs> because it's got another level of something special going on. And, uh, and, it's, and if you want to call it the nuanced level, I wouldn't argue that it's not the same thing, by the way. But again, I, something happens here that, that you know, puts me in mind of the 50s and uh, an interesting time of everything being simplistically uh, stated. By the way, this is a style, whether you like it or not. You know, it's got this wonderful cleverness sort of to it. It's, it's a bang, bang. Uh, you know, the, the marks are all just chunked on there. Uh, you know, there's this there's this feeling of of disdain almost for the for, for the for anything nuanced. You know, the loveliness of a transition of a form in the middle of a of a of a leg there, for example. Uh, there's there's no search for anything deeper than just I can tell you how to set this thing up. And by the way, I think he's dead right. That is exactly how you set something up. I don't think it's any of us are going to probably want to finish much that way. But again, that's again your personal statement in your own music. You know. Uh, yeah, there's something about it, though, that has this winds up being, even though, even though the colors are beautiful and they're right relations to each other in all sort of way, it still has this funny feeling of being cold, calculated, and, and frankly, simplistic. So now I'm going to show you the student's work. This is, just came to me today, and I want to thank uh, Dominique in Chicago, uh, who I know watches these from time to time, but he, he, he um, recently contacted me and said, yes, there is this guy. I think he lived in Chicago, and but he... Um, but he, both of these guys coming out of Australia, um, and this guy, uh, Percy Leeson, L-E-A-S-O-N, came out in the, in the 30s. But again, I'm saying again, if you look at these things, they look like exercises, right? They look like mechanical exercises. There's, there's something far short of a, of a searched out magic, you know, and I'm talking about anything from shapes to, 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 to pattern. I mean, you know, all the things that we, we think of as, as giving the charm to the visual impression. So, and, and I'm telling you again, the disdain with which, <laughs> which with ta, uh, 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 Meldrum refers to, for example, composition, you know, sort of shows in these things. Like, he didn't bring any, any real, tr you know, true magic to these compositions. And again, but they're, but they're right in their values. They're right in their edges. And they look like they're right in their deportment so that all the parts that look like objects look like they're right prospectively. And we know that the conversation is, of course, you're not sitting there thinking about perspective per se. And then we have, finally, we have, um, uh, we have, <laughs> I had to check my, make sure I had time. I ran out of time last time I did this at the end of, of one of my, my screens. So, all right. And so let's go to his body of portrait work. And again, I'm going to suggest to you that these things, for example, are, I mean, as mechanically sound, so to speak, you know, their sizes, their placements, their, uh, their value and chroma and color relations, their effects are all right in relation to each other. And yet they come across, and to me this is truly sad, they come across as being unimportant. They look like a statement about a method, you know? So is this method painting? You know, but there's something about them. And I, I would just send you back again to the Boston School. What is it about the Boston School where these guys stay longer and bring more quality, you know? So I'm going to suggest that a lot of what's happening here is winds up being, uh, unfortunately, uh, formularistic. And uh, because the mechanical process works so good, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to bring anything of yourself. So I'll talk more about that in the next iteration of this thing. But... Um, but one of the things that, that, that uh, Thompson does, he does talk about beauty, and uh, I somewhere have some references. I'll probably bring that up in the next one I talk about him, but, which I don't know will be when, but, but he does talk about beauty and uh, even music and harmonies and things like that. Uh, but but uh, in, there's just a tendency here to just show that your mechanics will do all you need and then leave without bringing a, you know, without any, any appearance of your soul having been involved. And I just have a suspicion that it's 
it's like any kind of art, you know, if, if you aren't there, if, if there's not evidence, I don't know if the word is evidence of the struggle, but evidence of your connection to the human race and not just a mechanical process, this is just to me, this winds up being just to me, another form of photography. It's just stylistic, mechanical, over and over and over and over thing. Whereas Boston School always had that mindset about the search. Uh, and you can see it in this, in this portrait here, but there's this idea of searching out the music not just hitting these major notes, and if you do them ocularly right, then why isn't that done? Why aren't we done? And so that would be, if this has actually been a critique, I'm not going to deny it, that would be my critique of this. And I would take nothing away from the accuracy of the note or the reason why they're accurate, because they're of, the, of their orientation toward the pure mechanical relationships of things. But there's more in the, in the deeper search than they come up with. Uh, and I would suggest to you that that kind of painting on the left, uh, as I said, so winds up being so much like a style that it wears itself out really fast. And you'll see a whole bunch of this in illustrations in the 40s uh, um, and uh, 50s, 60s, whatever, uh, in our country. Uh, so, you know, so you, it's kind of a like, which world do you want to be part of, you know? I suggest to you that, um, that there's a bigger thing going on out there uh, you know, I'll take that to God. I'd much, 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 I'd much, as much as I think that thing on the left is a, is a perfect example of how to think about the visual world and even how to approach it, the one on the right is going to keep my interest uh, at some more profound levels. And I don't mean just subject. I don't mean even subject at all, actually, because there's that deeper search for more. And uh, I, th I think you're not treating your uh, guests, with it, you know, your viewers, with as much respect as you ought to if you don't... Um, if you don't bring out, if you don't bring them more, if you don't bring more to the game for them. So that's me talking about the Boston School. By the way, uh, uh, look it up for yourself. Uh, question what I'm saying. Challenge me, uh, all those things. But uh, look with your own eyes, you know. Um, give, give, give Max his due respect. The guy, the guy knows what he's talking about. But if you ask me what I think of his art, uh, not not so much, you know. That's but that's your problem. He's right about the stuff, and all I'm saying to you about his stuff is this: he's mechanically sound. And if you're not as sound as he is, you don't have the stuff to build your music on. So with that, uh, I'll leave. Uh, Jazz, you can send me a note about how mean I am. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, to all of you, uh, comment, uh, share, uh, subscribe, all of the above, and uh, thanks again. See ya.